Now, when you get to be my age, you have a lot of stories you could tell. I've thought about God's faithfulness over the years to me, how He's answered prayer. I could talk to you about how He saved me when I was 14 years old, how、um, He's provided for me over the years, how He gave me a wonderful Christian husband, how He's led me over the years to four different Christian schools. I could tell you how He comforted me when our babies died, our first babies. I could tell you about his forgiveness and his mercy. But this year I've been rather nostalgic because I've thought about the 27 years of teaching in four different Christian schools. And I know my formal Christian ministry in Christian schools is coming to an end. So today I'm not really going to tell you my story. Today is going to be a farewell address to you students at Red Lion Christian Academy. George Washington gave a farewell address when he was getting to, ready to retire and go to Mount Vernon. So I figure I can give a farewell address when I'm getting ready to retire too, and just reminisce a little bit. Most of you know Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and those verses have meant a lot to me over the years. The verses say, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And I can tell you that God has directed my paths in very definite ways、um, in four different Christian schools. And if you want God to direct your paths, he will. All you have to do is surrender your life to him and ask him to direct you, and he will be more than willing to do that. He will give you wisdom, he'll help you make wise decisions. A few weeks ago, I had the privilege of talking to the National Honor Society. Here are some things that I reminisced with the National Honor Society students, and I'd like to just remind you of、um, life lessons that we learned from eighth grade literature. One story we read was called They Called Her Moses, and it was about Harriet Tubman. She was a conductor on the Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman was a little woman in stature. She was not well educated. She、um, had periodic blackouts because an overseer had thrown a heavy weight at someone and missed that person and hit Harriet. So she would black out periodically. She、um, got her way to freedom. She escaped from slavery and walked from Maryland to Canada in the winter. And arrived safely in Canada and was free. And she was enjoying her freedom. And she could have stayed there and just sat back and relaxed and said, Well, I'm free now. But she didn't. She was concerned about other people. And she went back 19 times walking from Canada to Maryland, leading over 300 slaves to freedom because she wanted to be, hel- she wanted to be a helper. And the point of the whole story was God can use anyone. You don't have to be real smart. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to be something great in the world's eyes. If you want God to use you, He can. And He used Harriet Tubman because she was willing to be used. Another story we read was Thank You, Ma'am by Langston Hughes. This story was about a woman who was a large woman, it said, who had a large purse. And her name was Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones. And she was walking home from school or walking home from work one night at 11 o'clock after the late shift in a beauty parlor, probably cleaning up. And a boy came, a 14 year old boy, came to try to steal her purse because he wanted blue suede shoes. And do you remember what she did? She dragged him to her one bedroom apartment, made him wash his face, gave him dinner, which he had not yet had at 11 o'clock because no one was home at his house. She didn't call the police that she could have done, but she didn't because she wanted to show him kindness. She had done bad things in her life that she was ashamed of, and she wanted to help this boy. And we talked about how you don't know how one little bit of kindness. Can help someone. Kindness goes such a long way. So, I'd like to encourage you students to look around, look for needs that you see in other students, in your family members, in your younger brothers and sisters, and try to help them. 
At the end of the story, she gave them ten dollars of, gave him ten dollars of her hard-earned money, so that he would not steal again. And all he could say was, at the end of the story, "Thank you, ma'am," because he was so astonished at the kindness of this woman. I'd like to encourage you to be kind to other people, like Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones was. Then some classes read part of "I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings" by Maya Angelou. In this part of the story, Maya was not talking. She was about 11 years old, and she just quit talking because she had had experienced something tragic in her life. And one woman in a town, a small town, named Mrs. Flowers, took interest in her. She gave her lemonade and she gave her cookies, and she made her read out loud from a tale of two cities. And there, Maya found her voice, her real voice, but she also found her literary voice because she started writing poetry, and she became a great poet, and also a college professor, all because one woman took time out to help a little girl. Then we read "The Road Not Taken" by Robert Frost, one of my favorite poems. The poem starts out: Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, and the poem goes on to say he he decided to take one road over the other. One road wasn't necessarily better, but he chose one road. And at the end of the poem, he says, "I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made the difference." And the whole point of the poem is that choices matter. We read a lot of verses about the way. Here is the way. Walk ye in it. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. There are a lot of verses in the Old Testament that talk about the way and the path and which path to take. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me." We talked about being sure that you were following Jesus, who is the way, and that you're on the right road. We talked about the roads mentioned in the New Testament, where it says there's a broad road that leads to destruction, and most people, unfortunately, are on that road. Then we talked about the narrow road that most people are not on. Few there be that find it, the Bible says, but that's the road that leads to eternal life. We talked about making wise choices and being on the right road. The Bible says, "This is the way; walk in it. Be sure you're walking on the right road." Proverbs four, fourteen and fifteen says this: "Do not set your foot on the path of the wicked, or walk in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it, and go on your way." You're going to have a lot of chances as you get older, especially when you get into college, to go on the wrong path. The Bible says, "Avoid it. Don't follow it. Turn from it. Pass away." This year, we read *The Hobbit* by J.R.R. Tolkien, and you can learn a lot of life lessons from hobbits and dwarves. And the dwarves are getting ready to go through Mirkwood Forest, which is a dark, scary place. And Gandalf gives them a warning, and he says, "Whatever you do, don't leave the path." And we talked about not leaving the path. The Bible says, "To whom much is given, of him shall much be required." God has given you a lot at Red Lion Christian Academy. You know what's right. Don't leave the path, even when you're in college, even when you're an adult, and you can do your own thing. Don't leave the path. Remember the things that you've learned here. The dwarves、um, were hungry. They were on the path, but off in the distance, they saw a light, and they saw a feast going on, and they smelled the scents of the food, and they decided to leave the path to follow the food and follow the light, and they got terribly lost. And Bilbo said, "Why did we not follow?" Gandalf's advice: Why did we leave the path? What a mess we're in now! I've seen students who have left the path and have made a mess of their lives. And if you've done that already, the Bible says there's forgiveness. God wants you to come back to the path. But my point is that I'm trying to remind you of: is don't leave the path. 
in the first place. Um, Ten years from now, when I see you in the mall, I've already told you, please tell me who you are because you change a lot and I might not remember your name. Tell me who you are. I'm going to want to know all about you, your family, what you're doing with your life. Um, and I will listen to your grammar. I will listen to your pronouns to see if you're starting the sentence with me or ending sentences with at. But the most important thing I'll want to know is, are you walking in the truth? Are you still walking in the way that we tried to teach you at Red Lion Christian Academy? In the book of 3 John, John is writing to his friend Gaius. He says, whom I love in the truth. And he says this in verses 3 and 4. It gave me great joy to have some brothers come and tell me about your faithfulness to the truth and how you continue to walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. That's what your teachers at Red Lion Christian Academy want for you, that we hear that you walk in the truth. When I look at Facebook, am I going to see that you're walking in the truth? Your pastors, your parents, your um, youth pastors all want to see that you're walking in the truth. Use your life. Make it count for something. Make it count for the Lord. There's an old saying that says, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Use your life to serve others. Be kind. You never know what it's going to do for other people. Serve the Lord. Walk in the truth. And I want to leave with this quote from Gandalf. This is my quote from Gandalf to you. And he said to the dwarves, I'm saying to you, goodbye. Be good. Take care of yourselves and don't leave the path.